I am in search of something this year. Something better. From pens, to knockoffs, to sharpies, to more sharpies, and to traditional. This medium has always been done in black, and your mistakes are permanent. Or are they? Throughout this month, I will be testing the four best white inks out there, putting them through their own rigorous tests, as I want to find out which of these is the best white ink of them all. Let the best ink win. Tao suggested in this video, we will be looking at four different white inks throughout this month, including trying to build the ultimate white ink pen. I think that's going to be really fun to do. And this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay White India Ink. I've never used White India Ink before, so I'm very excited. This is one my friends have recommended to me. In fact, one of my friends actually gave this to me. So. Thank you, and we will be diving into it. All right, you know, it's not the same without the Batman book. So this is a white ink that is obviously not in a pen, so I have to use a dip pen. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone, so we'll be learning as I do this. But I feel like the real test for white ink will be doing it twofold, by testing it on a bunch of these, basically these inks, and then I do have some black paper right here that we could test it on as well. So I'm gonna put that to the side and we are going to just mark up the page real quick and then test the white ink. So let's do that. So I laid down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven marks and these are with different Sharpies and instruments. So we're going to use this white ink and really try and see how well it covers it. Now one thing I like about this is if you get it open, it has a little eyedropper, which is really nice. So let's try it with the King Sharpie. Put a little drop or two right there. And then we're gonna take our paintbrush and really spread it out. It's very, very chunky, so I'm wondering if it needs to be shaken a little more. But we're gonna paint it on. I can lie, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm actually gonna shake this up a little bit. So it's going on pretty smoothly now that I've spread it out. Uh, my only real concern, the white is not fully coloring the black. So as you can see, it covered it pretty well. I'm not too worried because the actual uh, intensity of the Sharpie, you know, it's a Sharpie, it's gonna be pretty intense. So it did really well, and I'm thinking maybe a second coat would probably cover it all. But this is coat one, so I'm curious. Let's let it dry and then we'll do a second coat on all of these. And I shook it pretty well, so let's let's give it another go. So let's do a few drops. A few drops really is a good amount to cover a surface. And now, oh yeah, it's a lot more liquidy now. It's going down a lot smoother. Uh, it's not as chunky before, so it needs a good shaking. I, I didn't shake it as well. But yeah, it's it's really going down smooth now. Look at that. That's awesome. And again, it pretty much almost covered the Sharpie chisel tip uh, in one go. That's pretty impressive. Gotta say, I also have my little Batman cup, by the way, right here, so I can clean my brush. And I think the important part is, as you can see on camera, it covers it a lot more on camera than in person. And to me, I'm okay with that, and that's important because a lot of my artwork is you know, taken digitally where I take pictures of my hand-drawn work. So for it to look good on camera is just as important, if not more so, than looking good in person. We're gonna do the Master, uh, that one of my favorite cheap fine liners. And this goes down, again, really smooth with the paintbrush. And it's almost covering the Master one, which is really nice. Not as, not as much actually. It's actually smearing. Interesting. So with the masters, I believe they are water-based instead of alcohol-based. So they actually are smearing when the ink's put onto it. So that's worth noting. So the masters may not be a good combination with this because of the fact that they smear. Let's try Pigma. 
few lines. Pigma has very rich ink. Very smooth, very rich. So I'm curious how this is going to go. It's going really good. You can clearly see a little bit of smudging. Just a little. And another thing I'm not liking is it's not really covering it very well. Uh, so that's not good. But I'm noticing here, as it dries, it's actually lightening up too. So that's not good. Let's give it a shot with... Now this is the liquid markers. You can get these for a dollar at Dollar Tree. And they are smearing, so they're really making a gray ink. So these do not uh, go well with water, I'm noticing. I can say right now, this is a little disappointing. I am, uh, you know, I'm not very happy with how this is going right now. Because as it dries, it's lightening up. So like these layers, at least uh, to me, you know, on camera, I think it looks the same. But to me, it looks a lot more shown and less cover, especially these last three. These are, these are not good. So let's go with the Sharpie paint next. I will say it goes down really smooth. So I like that. My problem is I don't feel like it's really covering it. Um, here it's covering it pretty well. But how is it going to look when it dries? Because that's the next question. The paint one's not smudging at all, so that's nice. And we're going to do the Sharpie pen now. But I feel like if you concentrate it in an area, it'd probably do better, but then you kind of get an uneven and textured uh, paper. As you can see, it starts to lift. As you can see with my sketchbook, it's starting to lift and warp the paper. Uh, so I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this, honestly. First layer. On camera, this one looks basically gone. It's not. It's still very visible. Uh, both of these are. Uh, not as bad as these ones over here. So. On the Sharpie pen and paint Sharpie, it did really well. But I'm wondering if that has to do with their thinness. Uh, maybe not, because the Pigma, which is a 0.5, um, which is very similar to these, is showing pretty much more. So uh, let's do a, again, we're going to do a double layer, see how that holds up. And uh, then we'll make our final verdict and do some artwork with it. So let's do that. Uh, that's something my teacher, Professor Cordy, taught me was sometimes you gotta do multiple layers. So let's do that. Looks like it's faring a lot better with the double layers. So that's good. So let's put the second layer chiseled. The second layer on the King one, as of right now, it hasn't dried yet, looks good. It actually looks good. So I'm thinking maybe this is a multi-layer kind of deal. You know, you gotta do a few multi-layers. There we go. So not bad. And a few drops here. I feel like this one needs it. And again, this one is the one that I know is that bled a lot. Not as much bleeding this time. So I'm thinking that first layer hardening really sealed off the uh, the ink so it couldn't be spread more. So that's interesting. So that's worth noting uh, with this one. This one looks really good on camera. Let's do the Pigma. A few drops. I know someone's probably screaming, he's doing the wrong technique. Well, you know what? I'm trying. I am trying. This is really out of my comfort zone. Um, so I need to do more research into this. Uh, also, I have a little cold, so if my voice sounds different, uh, you know, I apologize. So far, looking really good, especially on camera. It looks a lot better. There we go. So that's taking a lot better, and a lot less smudging, so it's a lot less gray, which is good. I'm impressed with how smooth even when it was a little chunky, it was still a very smooth ink, which is nice. That's something you want to look for in an ink. That's something I look for in a pen, is the smoothness of it. That's one thing why I like this pen, the Zebra Brush pen, because it is it's a very smooth pen. Very smooth pen. This is very smooth ink. So we've got two more to test, uh, and then we will test on the black paper and then do some artwork on it. I'm actually going to do these two together, might as well. So here are the results. They're pretty much covered for the most part, I gotta say. Uh, I actually think that this works really well, especially since you'll be taking pictures or scans of your artwork. Honestly, this is acceptable. This is pretty good, not perfect. And you may have to do multiple layers, which is something I personally would like to avoid and just do it once and done, but that's not the world we live in. So honestly, not bad, but we got one more test we're gonna do super quick. We're actually gonna take this piece of black paper that I have 
and we're going to attempt to actually, uh, not going to draw, but we're just going to see how it looks. So here's a good, healthy amount of white ink. You can see when it first hits, it's pretty white, but let's spread it out, see how it holds up. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. Starting to break up as it thins, which, you know, makes sense. Okay. And I'm going to see how the looks like if I just add some water. Just a little bit of water to it. Okay, so it spreads it out. Makes sense. Making it more, more black, which makes sense because I'm diluting the ink. Um, seems to carry a black-purple tint with it. Interesting. Okay. Honestly, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So I think that went really well. Looks pretty good, especially on camera. It looks good on camera. Um, pretty much what I expected. Now, for my opinion, the big, the big test. I'm gonna put a few drops here uh, because I'm actually going to now attempt to use a dip fountain pen. Let's do this. Oh, okay. That's really nice. Interesting. So as you can see when I put it down, it looks really good on the paper by the way. My main concern is I can't make little quick gestures like this. There we go. Okay, I just gotta work with the paper. I only have a certain amount. Because I was wondering like how would cross hatching work? It's not really working. It could be my lack of experience uh, shining through there. Uh, but honestly, that looks really good. So I am very, very, very happy with how this looks. So this is, in my opinion, a success. I have a quick little illustration I did. Here it is. And this is of Batman. Just did it super quick, took about 15 minutes. I want to ink it only using this. So I'm only gonna be using the Bombay White Ink. My tools will be a cup of water, a paintbrush, a dip pen, and some paper towels. That's it. So can I make artwork only using this? Let's see.
So I just finished inking this piece, and I really like how it came out. Overall, I would say that this isn't a bad white ink. If you have this and you haven't used it, definitely use it. If you have a friend that's throwing it away, grab it. Uh, if you see it for like maybe 10 bucks online or in Michaels, you got a coupon, whatever, get it. It's not bad at all. It's very smooth and it glides really nice, especially with the paintbrush. Very, very smooth with the paintbrush. Now, I did have some trouble with my nib, and my guess is because it's just my inexperience with using it, because uh, I had trouble really getting some of the lines when it came down to the lightning, and I ended up just making it a storm. But even then, I still think that it is a really, really good white ink. Not my favorite that I've tried so far out of all four, and I haven't tried all four of them, by the way, so this isn't like a, oh, I've done them all, I know which one's the best, and I'm building up. No, I'm just randomly trying them. I would have to say that I would personally rank this one on a scale of 1 to 5, or in this case, you know, 1 to 4, being we have 4 inks. I would say this is a 3. You know, this is number 3 uh, just right now. So, not too, too bad, but it could be a lot nicer, it could be a lot more richer, because while it does go down smooth, it did take quite a few layers to get this white bottom here. On camera, it looks really good. In person, you could see some of the black showing, but you know, that doesn't really affect me that much because I take pictures of my stuff to sell it online, so, you know, to his his own. But I do like the ink. I feel like it could be better. So again, right now on a scale of, you know, one to four, it is a three. So that's it for today. Tune in next week as we take a look at another one of our four inks.